So with uh, prokaryotes, we said that they were pretty boring on the inside and all the interesting stuff, at least the interesting stuff to look at, uh, was on the outside. And at least when we're talking about microbial cells, it's sort of the opposite with eukaryotes. They got a lot of stuff going on on the inside, all those different organelles and cytoskeleton and all of that stuff, but relatively little going on on the outside. Now, that's less true when you're talking about multicellular organisms, because then you have the extracellular matrix, which can be very complicated, and you have cell junctions and cell-to-cell -cell interactions and all of that sort of thing. But when you're talking about microbes, usually the outside of their cell is kind of it. Um, there are a few structures that we're going to talk about, but it's not a huge number of them. Uh, first, you got cell walls, right? So just like bacteria and archaea, eukaryotes can have cell walls. Um, plant cells are obviously not microbes, but pretty much all plant cells have cell walls made out of cellulose, which is a special polymer of glucose. Uh, fungi, most fungi, also have cell walls, and uh, their cell walls are made out of chitin, which is a slightly different polymer of glucose. It, it's structurally kind of similar to cellulose, but not exactly the same. So, for instance, if you were to release an enzyme that degraded cellulose and helped wood to biodegrade, as fungi do, they wouldn't end up destroying their own cell walls. Uh, some algae, again, uh, so algal cell walls can be made of all sorts of things. We talked about some earlier in the class, but uh, agarose is one, glass, cellulose, and sometimes other stuff. And some of them won't have particularly cell walls. Second thing that you're going to find outside of eukaryotic cells uh, or eukaryotic microbes are um, motility structures. And in terms of structures, there's two main structures that do motility, flagella and cilia. And honestly, they're very similar. The only real difference is in their placement and length. Flagellas are usually very long, and at least in eukaryotes, um, you might have only one, you might have two on opposite sides. There are some cells that have four, but you're probably not going to be just coated in flagella going all sorts of different directions. Um, and as we talked about before in the uh, lecture over the cytoskeleton, the way that the flagella or cilia work is that you have basically arrangements of microtubules that are connected with these motor proteins. And what these motor proteins are going to do is they're going to kick one side forward and the other side backwards. And when you have a big long structure, what that means is that the one that's kicked forwards is going to curve, and the one that's kicked backwards is going to bend the other direction. And so now you have your kicking, 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 like that. All right? And then they reverse, and they go the other direction. And they kick the other way. And so it basically swings back and forth like a dog wagging its tail. And that is going to produce this wave-like motion in flagella. Um, or the other arrangement is cilia. Cilia are much shorter. They use the same exact mechanism of uh, this, like, kicking in opposite directions to make them bend. 
uh, but instead the cilia are going to be all over the cell in these little hair-like projections. And what happens is they all beat the same way in what's called a power stroke, and then they sort of relax backwards. It's almost like doing a breast stroke, right? Where you have a power stroke in one direction, and then you move the other way, and it doesn't really disturb the water, or you're pushing yourself along with thousands and thousands of tiny little breaststroking arms. That's cilia. Um, now, there is a third method of eukaryotic motility called pseudopods, um, but pseudopods are not controlled by external structures. They're controlled by basically changing where the cell is. So it's not so much pushing itself through the water as kind of like crawling along its own feet. And uh, so that's not really an external structure. Um, but here you can see some pseudopods, right? So this is an amoeba eating a paramecium. And it's, I mean, the pseudopod is not exactly an external structure, but the cell can change its shape by changing how it's internal microfilaments are pushing against the cell uh, membrane to extend itself along various pathways. And that's it. That's what I got to talk about for eukaryotic external structures.